I'm Mari Cockrell, Communications Director here for the City of Abilene, and we're here with two guests from uh, the Betty Harvick Center here in Abilene. We have Nancy Elliott and Nikki Parkhill, who are yes. um, here to talk to us in particular about um, something that you may have heard a little bit about, but we really want to make sure people are, are, are knowing what's out there. There's a hotline available right now with free help, uh, mental health assistance during, especially with this COVID time. Um, because it's been a challenging time for everyone in some way or another, and um, it's it's a little crazy out there, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, but of course, we mean that in a very serious way as well, because it's mental health is something that we really need to take a, a, a close look at all the time and really give so much attention to. But especially now, so thank you for coming to talk about it. Thank you, thank you for yeah. having us. Yeah. So first, give us for for anyone who might be a little unfamiliar with Betty Hardwick and what you guys do. You see it there off a, a clack you know, on, mm -hmm. on the sort of southwest side of town. So what happens at Betty Hardwick sort of normally? What's going on there? Well, we are a community mental health center and we provide services, adult mental health services. We provide child and adolescent mental health services. We provide uh, help for children with developmental disabilities from age zero, zero to three. Uh, we provide services for people with intellectual developmental disabilities. And, um, that can range from case management to service coordination to medical medications in a psychiatric medical clinic. And uh, we provide forensic services for people in jail. And we provide um, just a crisis line, a 24 hour crisis line for anyone that's having a mental health emergency within our five counties. And that's that's all the time. That's all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so now, as we got into this this time of COVID, Nikki, for you, yes. um, you you really head up what has been the special uh, COVID help that's been out there, and it's coming through the state. Tell us a little bit how how this Actually, developed. it's coming from the federal government. Okay, it's a grant through FEMA. Okay, and it's funded to provide short-term mental health services for people who are struggling with with any kind of emotional issues having to do with COVID nineteen. So frustration, confusion, yeah. anxiety tired of messing with it, yeah. which I think is going to hit a lot of people right now. Um, any of those issues, we have a, a free helpline that's answered 24-7 uh, for people to call and just talk to someone. Yeah. And if they need more services than that, then our operators will, who are trained mental health professionals, will refer them or offer resources to them. Yeah. And so, and, and what does it look like now? I think so many of us are just kind of making do, and you might not realize that that you could benefit from some help. You know, that uh, someone would talk to you like, hey, yeah, it is hard. I mean, it's hard for everyone. Yeah. But so what is maybe um, some a need for maybe some mental health um, attention or just care or self-care? What does that look like? What might it look like in your life today, I guess? Well, one of the, the things I read recently said that 90% of Americans are really struggling more than somewhat, but very much struggling with issues around COVID-19, mm -hmm. emotional issues. So that's pretty much all of us yeah. have had some kind of emotional strain in our lives because of this disease and this pandemic. So it looks like someone who's trying to wear several hats at the same time, as a, especially as a mother. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really looking at mothers right now. Uh, you're trying to do homeschooling with your kids and work and run a household and take care of all the other things in your life and you've added homeschooling on top of it. Mm -hmm. So some a lot of the frustration and anxiety of, I don't know how to work this computer and we have to get this assignment in today and I don't know how to do it and my child doesn't know how to do it. There's just a lot of frustration that we would not be dealing with if if COVID-19 hadn't changed the way we live. So if you call in, uh, could you maybe even find and learn new tools of how to deal with those stresses? Absolutely, and, okay. and one of the things that we're working with is helping people realize what stress looks like, mm. and especially in their children, because they don't think of their children getting stressed, but they are. Yeah. So what to look for in your child and some tools to help combat that and help your children learn how to cope with it. Mm. Children don't know coping skills like we think they should. Yeah. <laughs> just not, we, just, we just help them out. We just give them what they need and yeah. they don't really learn to cope. And a lot of adults haven't either. So we teach coping skills and how to, how to handle whatever situation that you're in. Yeah. 
and the social aspect for them too. It's hard for all of us, but for the for ones who may Absolutely. be at home more than others and not seeing their friends. Right. And then once other friends did go back to school mm -hmm. and did go back into a classroom setting and they're seeing the kind of missing out or whatever, that's a whole other element. That's a whole, mm -hmm. a whole new yeah. element. Yeah. Um, and so tell us too, I, I was thinking about this and it's what's interesting I think with COVID in particular is that obviously this is serious and, and it's a huge thing in our lives, but it's not like we're at completely at apocalyptic time. <laughs> like you right. see in a movie of like Mad Max or where it's like, <laughs> so I think if we were in that setting, we would all go to a like, okay, life is totally different and we we need to be ready to go to this, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just survival, the fittest completely. But we're not, we're in this sort of normal life, but not normal life. And I think in a lot of ways it's sort of, it's harder, at least mentally, you know, maybe mm -hmm. not physically, we're not having to go out and hunt and, and live off the land. <laughs> and like, this is the end of times, but, but really is mentally so much harder because we were trying to be normal-ish mm -hmm, at the same right. time. Right, yeah. and I think that when, when all this started with COVID-19 back in February and March, I think we all thought this was gonna blow over pretty quick. Mm. And now there seems to be no end to it. Mm. And people are starting to struggle with what I call COVID fatigue. Mm -hmm. We're tired of it. We want things to go back to the way they were. Yeah. We wanna be able to get on an airplane and go somewhere. Mm -hmm. We all of us wanna get away because yeah. we've been homebound for so long. Yeah. Our community bound for a yeah. long time and uh, shrunk our circles mm -hmm. yeah. of influence. So people want to be able to get back to normal. They want to go out to dinner as a family mm -hmm. or have family reunions. Yes. And we just simply can't do that yet. Yeah. And now we're coming into a season of holidays. Like, how are we going to do trick or treat? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. there's just a lot of questions out there. So I think we're just tired of dealing with all this. And so a lot of people have dropped their guard. So one of the things I'd like for us to be sure people understand is that we can need to continue to do all the things the CDC has recommended, the hand washing, the, the masks, the social distancing, all of those things are still important. And if we relax them, we're gonna go back to the way it was two or three months ago mm -hmm. where it's everywhere. Yeah. So we have to be vigilant, especially with the holidays coming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, like you guys said, you know, there's a hotline, folks are welcome to call. Yes. And and if anything, if it's worth calling to find out what you might be able to get some help mm -hmm. with, even if you think, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I'm not, I don't need mental health. But maybe, you know, those, those little tools and things you can pick up helping, helping out just dealing with kids' education or yes. just the extra stress in the house can be really helpful. And yes. I think it's also important to know that it, you don't need to be, it, it's, it's not affiliated really with being a Betty Hardwick Center client. Mm. Correct. This is absolutely separate and um, just a service to our community. It's, oh, yeah. it's totally anonymous. Mm -hmm. okay. And it is anonymous. So if you work somewhere where you're afraid that if your manager finds out that you, you know, you're reaching out for help or telling company secrets or whatever, you don't have to worry yeah. about it because it's going nowhere. Yeah. It's totally anonymous. Good. So, yes. and you don't have to be a wreck before you call. Yes, but let's so call prior. Help anyone us. who wants a little bit of help or just yes. needs somebody to rant with, yeah. I mean, I do sessions with, with small groups where they just rant and I let them I yeah. facilitate a rant. It can help a lot because, right. because also because of the political aspect of all this, you may yes. find that you're not really able to talk about it with family because it gets into a little bit of mixed company mm -hmm. and like, oh, we don't want to go there. So you really, you just need a, someone to rant and talk about That's or maybe right. talk about your your cousin so-and-so and how mm -hmm. they just drove you nuts <laughs> at exactly lunch right. and, <laughs> and like, I gotta get this off my chest. <laughs> so I'm available to go to, to different businesses or to a family's home and, and just visit with them and let them rant yeah. and offer some coping skills and that kind of thing. Gotcha. So mm -hmm. that's one of the services that we're providing is, is small groups. And, nice. and then I also will go to like Lions Club or um, any of the like Kiwanis or any of the clubs and do presentations about COVID-19 or stress or stress management or any of the things we're kind of coping with right now. Okay. Well, that's great. So maybe as an so employer a too, resource. give a call and see mm -hmm. if maybe help out with your, your right. workforce or whatnot. So, well, thank great. you thank so you. much. Yeah, of course we'll have uh, information for, for everyone as well, but um, reach out and, and get the help you need. Okay. Thank you yeah. so much, Mara. Yeah. Yeah. appreciate it. We got more online too at abilenetx.gov.